No member of the cabinet has ever changed life in America more than Francis Perkins did. No voice in the FDR administration was more influential in shaping the New Deal than the Labor Secretary, Francis Perkins. She transformed America in many ways that no president has ever done. Man gets all the credit in popular history, but the woman did all the work. Frances Perkins is the forgotten labor secretary behind the most influential New Deal programs. The first woman in a presidential cabinet and the longest serving labor secretary, Frances Perkins thought of, wrote, and implemented programs like the Civilian Conservation Corps, the Public Works Administration, the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, and Social Security. Even before her cabinet position, she worked in state politics to advance workers' rights and the lives of citizens. Perkins' numerous achievements with women's rights, immigration, and labor rights ensure her spot as one of the most significant Americans. Frances Perkins was born in 1880 and grew up well-educated, attending college and receiving a master's degree. Her interest in social activism began in college, but increased after she spent time at Jane Addams Hull House. Her experiences there cemented her desire to advocate for workers' rights and against poverty. In 1907, Frances Perkins worked undercover for the Philadelphia Research and Protective Association to expose criminals and keep immigrant and black women from being exploited as prostitutes. Then, in 1910, she became secretary of the New York Consumers League, lobbying for improved working conditions and hours. Dismayed after witnessing the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire, Frances was appointed as executive secretary to the newly formed Committee on Safety, where she continued to improve labor rights. Her efforts led New York to pass laws on work hours and job conditions that set national precedents. In 1918, New York Governor Al Smith appointed Perkins to the New York State Industrial Commission, which she later chaired. There, she helped enforce the factory laws she had helped create a few years earlier. The next New York Governor, Franklin Roosevelt, appointed Perkins State Industrial Commissioner. In this position, she created unemployment insurance, shorter work weeks, and a minimum wage. She also became widely known for arguing against President Hoover's economic policies and plans. Frances Perkins' accomplishments in New York politics from 1910 to 1932 were constantly met with prejudices. As she worked for women's suffrage and counteracted sexism, she simultaneously managed to create some of the most influential legislation of the time. Leading New York as one of the most progressive states on labor policies, Perkins set precedents for women, other states, and nationwide, even while the country headed towards economic failure. Her policy ideas from these two decades went on to guide the New Deal. After FDR was elected president in 1932, he urged Frances Perkins to be his labor secretary. Though reluctant, she ultimately agreed, but only if she could work on causes she'd been fighting for in New York. FDR replied that he couldn't guarantee her success, but would support any efforts. In the first months, she helped establish the Civilian Conservation Corps, one of the key relief programs in the New Deal. Within the first hundred days, she convinced FDR to allocate $3.3 billion to public works, which was then used to employ up to two million citizens on building projects across the country. Perkins' ideas also led her to have a large influence in the Federal Emergency Relief Administration and National Industrial Recovery Act. Frances Perkins' biggest accomplishment was the creation of Social Security. At her urging, FDR created the Committee of Economic Security, placing Perkins as the chair. Perkins led the committee in drafting a comprehensive bill that included unemployment and disability insurance and pensions for the elderly. While many supported the idea of Social Security, there were constitutional questions and political opposition. At one point, FDR, fearing backlash, wanted the bill to wait, but after Perkins convinced him, he told the press he tremendously supported the bill. Perkins then persuaded members of Congress, and in 1935, it was signed into law. Social Security had some of the biggest impacts in FDR's administration. Francis Perkins' determination and work not only ensured its passage, but backed it constitutionally. This in turn set the ground for Medicaid, Medicare, and eventually the Affordable Care Act. Frances Perkins remained an active labor secretary valued by FDR throughout his entire presidency. After the National Industrial Recovery Act was ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, FDR asked Perkins to revise a fair labor bill she had written years before. She spent months working with lawyers and the president to get it through Congress. Finally, in 1938, the Fair Labor Standards Act was passed, 
abolishing child labor, ensuring a national minimum wage, and establishing the 40-hour work week. With the beginning of war in Europe, Perkins, as labor secretary, also worked hard on immigration. While many politicians and citizens were against immigrants, Perkins sought to welcome Europeans into the workforce. She ended a government program that harassed immigrants for deportation and worked around immigration quotas to help refugees escape danger. Throughout her time in public office, Frances Perkins had to work hard against critics. She dealt with sexist colleagues who felt like she was unsuited for the position and would make lewd remarks. After Frances became successful with the New Deal, conservatives turned on her policies and beliefs. At one point, opposition leaders encouraged HUAC to investigate her and brought up unwarranted charges of impeachment. Although it didn't pass, the charge made headlines and forever altered the public view of her. When FDR died in 1945, it marked the end of Perkins' 12-year term as Labor Secretary. However, she remained in government when President Truman appointed her to the U.S. Civil Service Commission. Finally retiring when she was 73, Perkins maintained a large public political role until she died at 85 years old. Any one of Frances Perkins' accomplishments demonstrate a measurable determination and profound impact. Solely being the first woman in the cabinet set precedence. Yet more importantly, she guided state and national reforms and policies ranging from immigration to child labor, which combined with her leadership of New Deal programs created long-lasting effects on the United States. Frances Perkins, too often forgotten, is one of the most influential people in this country and deserves to be recognized as such nationally and in this classroom.